And um, when we get to those new hymns, sing loud, sing proud, even if there's some mistakes. Good morning. Blessings to you in this season after Pentecost. I'm Teresa Reed, and welcome to University Community Presbyterian Church, where our mission is we invite all to faith in Jesus Christ and growth in discipleship through word, prayer, and service. If there are guests with us today, it helps if you fill out that little yellow card on the back of the pew, and then, and then we can reach you, and that we're interested in doing. A um, few a little different changes in the summer schedule. So Melissa will be in the office 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and the rest of the time not. And uh, the church office will be closed on July the 4th. So if you need Melissa or Pastor Erica, uh, you could uh, catch them on Monday or Wednesday. The pastor's office windows are being worked on this week. So she's not going to be there. And if you need her, you can reach her by her cell phone or email, and she can set up a time to meet with you or however you'd like to connect. Um, if you need her cell number, you can look in the bulletin this week or contact the church office. The other is, is there another announcement of any kind? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> the festival. The festival actually starts today. Tonight is the festival chorus. We begin 7 to 9 p.m. We meet at Pastor Erica's husband's church, um, which is called Univers Fairbanks Lutheran. Sorry. Um, we, we've changed every year, so it's confusing. And um, you don't have to read music. Um, you do have to register, fsaf.org. And we give a concert two weeks from today at the Davis Concert Hall. I don't know what time. And it's a wonderful variety of um, spirituals, American folk tunes, uh, American music, just some really great music, and a few surprises. Ask me if you have questions. 
So Margie and Ron Illingsworth are out picking flowers today, I think, or doing something to them. Uh, they have the Peony Farm in North Pole, and she thinks that by Tuesday she will have taken all the stems that she needs for her sales. So she has said that anyone who wants to go out for a U pick, peonies to North Pole, you can contact her, Margie, by checking with the office and get information. So she told me the other day that they have 15,000 peony plants. I can't, I, I can't put that up here anywhere. So anyway, I think it would be fun to go out and see what's happening. Any other announcements? If not, would you please stand for the call to the worship? We trust that the Lord is with us and all shall be made well. Our faith is the light that guides us through work and life and the world. Rejoice and know that God is here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. O God of all creation, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof. You touch the leaves with the dew in the morning. You send the breezes to cool the night. The trees are laden with fruit because of your blessing. Fields produce crops because of your care. As you watch over your people and fill all their needs, now send forth your spirit and be present among us. We lift up our heads and give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. Our hymn of praise is As the Deer, page 626 in your hymnal. the call of confession. We hear the words of Jesus, take up your cross and follow me. These words can scare us. We know what taking up a cross meant for him. 
We do not feel able to sacrifice our lives. We are not even ready on most days to sacrifice smaller things for the sake of the kingdom. Today, O oh God, we confess our timidity, our weaknesses, our fears, and our hesitations, beginning with the time of silent confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us what we are, and direct what we shall be that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Grace is God's faithfulness. With God there is forgiveness and great power to redeem. God's mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. God has turned our mourning to dancing forgiving us fully and freely. Our souls will not be silent. As forgiven people, we will praise God. Glory be to the Father. Christ be with you all. And also with you. I invite you to share that sign of peace with those around you. As you're retaking your seats, if there are any kiddos out there that want to come up, um, any kiddos going once, going twice? Oh, here they come! All right, woohoo! Hello, tank tops and shorts. It's summer. Woo! That's awesome. How are you both today? Good? Yeah? Have you been able to play outside even with all the smoke? No? Yeah, I've been trying. Yeah, you have? Nice. It's not smoky? Oh, it's too smoky? Yeah. I've been trying to play more inside too. Yeah. Hey, have you guys ever gone on any special trips? Maybe Maybe even like to Anchorage or to a cousin's house or anywhere. You know what also counts as a special trip? To the grocery store. Yep. Sometimes grocery stores are like the most exciting thing. I remember during COVID, I would get dressed up to go to the grocery store because it was like the highlight of the week. Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you. Not alone. Yep. Yep. Put on my fancy church clothes. Go get some apples and Clorox wipes. Oh, yeah. Those are the days. Yeah. So what happens when you're going on a trip? You got to get ready. Yeah, you got to get ready. Maybe pack some extra clothes, pack some snacks. Yeah, put some gas in the car. Yeah. Do you take a good nap before you go? Yeah. Yep, me too. Uh, go to the bathroom before you get in the car. That's an essential. Yeah. So we do all these things to prepare for a trip so that when we get there, we can enjoy our time. Well, Miss Kathy went on a big fancy trip. Her preparations included buying plane tickets and practicing walking miles and miles every day with a heavy backpack on. And she's going to give us a little show and tell of what she carried with her on her trip. They're coming back. They're coming back. They're coming back. And I chose one and used it that was so colorful because I thought no one would be able to take it and hide it, you know, and not and it would be very recognizable. So what do you think I keep in here? This is something that I wanted available all the time. Water. No. Well, did you say water again? Mm -hmm. No, my water's over there. I'll give you a hint. I'll show you something. What do you think? But what else might happen? <laughs> what else might happen during the day? Sometimes it happens here in Fairbanks, but it hasn't happened for a long time. Rain. Rain. I kept my rain poncho available to me. And also, these were some of my extra meds, just in case I needed them. And there's one thing in here that I only discovered when I went to do this hike. It's called hiker's wool, and it's excellent for padding any places that might be rubbing on your feet. Okay, so those are the things I kept totally available, okay? Otherwise, I had to unpack, I had to undo my pack, 
And I could even, if I had a friend walk by and it started to rain, I could even tell them I didn't have to take my pack off. I'd say, could you unzip that and pull out my poncho for me? And people would do that for each other. Okay, normally, but I didn't have time to change right now, this is what I would walk in, okay, my hiking boots. This is what I wore basically every single day. But I also had these along. These are my Tevas. So at night, I didn't have to wear these. Take them off for a while. And I had one more pair of footwear. I happened to find these at Value Village like right before I left. Can anybody read this? Believe in yourself. I thought that was really good. Nice. <laughs> I wasn't sure how I was going to do on this hike, so I thought that was good. These are for the shower, okay? So you have some protection from, you know, bugs that grow in showers. All right. This is a bag with things like toiletries. Now, I have fancy bags that hang on hooks, but you know what? This is a lot lighter. Everything I took, I weighed. And if I had options, I chose whatever was lightest because on this hike, I carried this every single day, sometimes up to 17 miles in that day. So I wanted it as light as possible. Now, most of the time, I did not need anything more than this or my long sleeve merino wool shirt, but I did have additional clothing. Okay. I had three layers so that I would stay warm. Electronics. I had to have a battery pack because my phone wouldn't last all day. I took way too many pictures and videos. And this may be a little interesting to you. Do you have you seen like if your mom or your grandma plugs in their phone? Have you seen how you plug it into the wall? Well, if this is all you take in Spain and you try plugging it in the wall, you're going to have a problem. So you have an adapter and you put it on and then that will go in the wall and you can charge your electronics. Okay. Now what else haven't I shown you, do you think? What else would you bring if you were going on a trip for a month? Do you think that she might take a change of clothing? Okay, well, this is what I have in here is my change of clothing because I only had two shirts, long sleeve pants, a long sleeve pair of pants for evening and uh, flying that was comfortable, and one other pair of bike shorts. That's what's in here. Every single night, I washed my shirt, my underwear, oh, and my socks. But that's in a different bag. This is underwear, socks, night shirt. And some of you may be a little interested. So again, like I say, I was trying really hard to reduce my weight. Didn't put it in there. There's one more thing that I brought that I, I want you to think about. If you can think, if you guys can think. So when did, would you say? Well, I, I bought food along the way. So I did not bring a conventional towel. This actually is a silk scarf from Cambodia. And this is what I used as a towel because it's lighter. <laughs> Not as great as a towel, I will say that, but it worked. Well, there's one other thing I use. Now, basically, I stayed in hostels, which are like dorm room places, but some of them don't have blankets. I took my sleeping bag. Okay, now, there is one other thing that's not in my backpack. It's actually on my body. Can anybody think of what else I might have? Pockets, did you say? I do. I have pockets, and I had exactly, I knew exactly what was in each pocket every single day because I wore these every day, so I didn't even have to empty the pockets. There's one more thing. Can anybody think? No? My Bible was on my phone. Passport. So, ever since I've been doing international travel, I have used a hidden waist belt because I never have to worry. And that is where my passport, my credential, which is what they stamped, all went, and my extra cash. So in my other, you know, in my fanny pack, I had cash for the day, but I carried a lot of extra cash. And I will just show you this. So on this hike, which is called the Camino, 
you carry this along. And every place you stop, they will give you a stamp. So you st get stamps wherever you stay, and sometimes the um, restaurants will have stamps, or if you go to something like a museum, they'll have a stamp. So this is your record. When you get to Santiago, you go into an office and you show it to them, and they give you um, your Compostela, which is a piece of paper that shows that you did it, that you did the Camino. And mine is actually out on the table if you want to look at it. Thank you. Do you want to try wearing her backpack? Oh, I'll only put some of these yeah. back in here, okay? Because I bet this backpack weighs about what you do. Yeah. <laughs> And that would be really hard to carry, wouldn't it? I carry it. What was it? It's too hard to carry. My backpack, so I picked up a few things in Spain, but I'm guessing that the backpack itself with all my stuff was 17 pounds. And then I, um, you know, I carried food and water every day. So do you want to try it? I didn't put everything in. Here, why don't you step down here first? Job. Okay, I'm letting go. Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> That's All right. I think your brother wants to try. Here we go. Maybe I'll have to take you along next time to be my porter. Woo! <laughs> it's pretty heavy, huh, Franklin? That no, about it's not. All right. Well, I could keep adding stuff. You, yeah, we could keep adding stuff. <laughs> so. Kathy was on a long walk with a lot of really important and essential stuff. And she made some really good decisions as she was preparing about how to make her pack lighter so that her trip would be easier. But it was still pretty hard some days. And just like Kathy walking on the Camino wasn't always the easiest, so too when we're journeying with God, it's not always the easiest thing. But God is there to help us. Just like Kathy could look to a friend and say, hey, can you unzip this pouch so I can get my rain poncho out? And, and they would. They would help her out. So God is there helping us even when it's hard. And God never leaves our side no matter what. Would you pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you so much for loving with us and journeying with us. Even though it's not always easy to journey along with you, Thank you for helping us and guiding us and helping us carry the load of being your child who loves you and wants to help you out. Amen. Miss Muffy, I think, has an activity for you guys if you want to go do it. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we seek an understanding when we find none. Open our ears, our hearts, and our minds, and open us to our companions in faith through the hearing of your word. Amen. The scripture reading for today is Psalm 42. As a deer longs for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, Where is your God? These I remember, and I pour out my soul within them, that, that I would go with the multitude. I led them in procession to the house of God with a voice of rejoicing and thanksgiving, a crowd celebrating a festival. Why are you in despair, O my soul, and disturbed within me? Hope in God, because I will again praise him for the salvation of his presence. Oh, my God, within me, my soul is in despair. Therefore, I remember you from the land of Jordan and the heights of Hermon and the mountain of Mizar. Deep is calling to deep at the thunder of your waterfalls. All your breakers and your waves have passed over me. 
By day, Yahweh commands his loyal love, and in the night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mourning because of the oppression of the enemy? As with a shattering in my bones, my oppressors taunt me while they say to me all day, where is your God? Why are you in despair, O my soul? Why are you disturbed within me? Hope in God, because I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning again. Um, I do want to say that uh, I will be doing a more complete uh, pictures and stories about um, my Camino, but today is about the spiritual aspects of my pilgrimage. So first of all, what is the Camino de Santiago? After the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the apostles of Jesus spread across the known world to share the good news. Tradition has it that Apostle James went to Spain. <laughs> Go back, look. Um, after some time there, he returned to Jerusalem, okay, where he was beheaded by order of King Herod Agrippa I in 44 AD. His body was returned to Spain and buried in a field in Galicia. The northernmost state of Spain. This spot was lost to memory. In 813 AD, a tomb was supernaturally discovered in Spain to be the tomb of St. James of Santiago, as he is called in Spanish. King Alfonso II of Asturias was the first pilgrim who walked from Oviedo to Santiago to verify the finding of St. James's mortal remains and also to worship him. This route became the first official way of St. James. King Alfonso had a small chapel built over the tomb. During the Middle Ages, the town that grew up around it became the most important Christian place of pilgrimage after Jerusalem and Rome. The construction of the city's Romanesque cathedral began in 1078, and with it began a golden age for the pilgrimage to Santiago. In the 12th and 13th century, as many as 250,000 pilgrims traveled to Santiago every year from all over Europe. So you can see some of the routes people would have taken. Later during the Reformation, the popularity of pilgrimage decreased across Europe. But in the 1980s, a parish priest brought back the popularity of the Camino by working to both mark the route and to bring about a new golden age, highlighting it as a route of cultural exchange, communication, and understanding between European citizens. In 1985, 1,245 pilgrims arrived in Santiago. That number increased to 100,000 in 1993, the year the route was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In 2023, 446,000 pilgrims arrived in Santiago. And so far, in 2024, the estimate is that 23% more pilgrims will be walking the Camino this year. So I'm part of that group. <laughs> All right, so my interest in the Camino. I started taking Spanish at UAF in 2016. I don't remember the first time I heard about the Camino, but I do remember asking one of my Spanish professors which route I should walk. And Kim Stewart told me the Primitivo, the original route from Oviedo in Asturias, ending in Santiago in Galicia. At the time I thought, what a great way to see a country, to practice my Spanish and to meet people. And all of those things are true. I had started planning to walk in 2020. 
Then COVID hit in March 2020, so that dream died. Then November 25th, 2020, my son Andrew died. My life shattered at my feet. I wanted to crawl into a hole and die, though I also had a recurring thought that I didn't want to become a bitter old woman. I was unprepared for losing it, my beloved son. And seriously, who would prepare for losing their child? Plus, his death had been ruled a suicide, but has never been proven to be suicide one way or the other. Though I have accepted suicide as a strong possibility, his death remains a mystery. With all the accompanying what ifs, coulda, shoulda, woulda. But also, I had never experienced grief of any proportion, much less grief due to ca catastrophic loss. As described in the book, A Grief, Grief Disguised by Jerry Sitzer, who was a theolo theologian at Whitworth. He lost his wife, his mother, and one of his children in a car accident. I read this book, it was referred to me three years into my grief journey. And this book just put together everything I had experienced. Um, the question he explores in the book is, and I quote, what meaning can be gained from suffering and how can we grow through suffering? And our response involves the choices we make, the grace we receive, and ultimately the transformation we experience in the loss. I just want to say I have extra copies of this book in the back. If you have any desire to look or read it, just take one of them. Some of them have marks in them because I buy them used. If it doesn't speak to you, give it to someone else or bring it back. I hand them out. <laughs> I lived in a state of shock after Andrew died for at least a year. This made the second year worse when that protection wore off and reality set in. The journey of grief is long and I accept will never end for me. I will always and forever miss my son and wish he was here to walk in the house, say hi mom, and give me a big hug. My goal in speaking to you today is not to say that my grief is worse than any of yours that you have had or that you are experiencing, or to make my son into a saint, which he was not. But I will share with you some of my grief journey and about my Camino pil pilgrimage. Andrew's death challenged my thoughts about God, which can be summarized into two main beliefs. Number one, God is love. Number two, God is sovereign in that he has supreme authority and absolute power over all things. As a God of love who has supreme authority and power over all things, I believe that God had the power to change the outcome the night that Andrew died. I believe God performs miracles. So why didn't God prevent Andrew's death? How is this an example of God's love? These questions can swirl out of control in my brain. I don't believe that God wanted Andrew to die, but I do believe that God allowed Andrew's death. At the best of times, I can accept that I will not know the answers to these questions here on earth. I must wait for those answers until heaven. But at the worst of times, the questions can be overwhelming, and Andrew's loss puts me in a deep pit with sheer sides that I can't see a way to climb out of. Did I feel God's presence after Andrew died? At first, I only felt God's presence through the action of my family, friends, and church family who surrounded me with their presence by listening to me say the same things over and over again through their hugs by sending messages, cards, and emails, by bringing us food, by helping create an addition to the garden that Andrew had started for his ego project, and by never ceasing to pray. These actions were evidence of God's presence with me. 
I am only speaking to you today because of your support and of the support from family and friends here in the U.S. and around the world. Three and a half years have passed since that day when my world turned upside down. I have tried to heal in many ways. I have read books and listened to podcasts. I have joined virtual and in-person groups. I have attended online conferences about child loss. I have gone to counseling. I have talked with pastors. I have studied mental health and suicide. And I have made new friends who have also lost children. I have struggled to see a way forward. I have tried to accept that sorrow and joy can coexist and that I can find peace in spite of pain. The Camino was still in the back of my mind. In the fall of 2023, I made a plane reservation to fly to Spain and started buying some needed equipment and physically preparing to go by walking longer distances and carrying more and more weight but I was still unsure about whether I really would go. But my husband Dave said, go, and I thank him for his encouragement and support. Some of my goals for walking the Camino changed. My goals became spiritual as well as physical and social. I had listened to a Christian speaker whose son had died by suicide, and she said the turning point for her in her grief journey was when she finally decided to fully trust God again. I wrote goals for my Camino. Deepen trust in God. And remember the past, experience the present, and ponder the future. I talked with Pastor Erica, who supported my pilgrimage. The Sunday before I left, she gave me a blessing. And you all prayed for me. On April 15th, 2024, I left Fairbanks, arriving in Madrid, Spain on April 17th. From there, I took a train to Oviedo, where I stayed for two nights. I visited the cathedral in Oviedo, where the Primitivo officially starts, and started walking on April 19th, 2024. I walked the 200-mile trail from Oviedo to Santiago in 17 days. My longest day was 17 miles. I had two short days of 5 and 6.7 miles, and the other 14 days averaged out to 12 miles a day. More importantly was the elevation gain and loss. Total, I climbed, eight, climbed 18,900 feet and descended just about the same amount in those 17 days. I walked at least an additional 100 miles over those 17 days, exploring towns in the surrounding area. I stayed in hostels, or albergues, as they are called in Spain, both government-sponsored and private. I bought meals at grocery stores, cooked in the albergues, and ate a few meals in restaurants. I had seven gorgeous, clear, blue sky days. I walked one day, for five hours in the snow. I walked seven days in off and on rain, and I even experienced hail. On one of those rainy days, I looked at the trail ahead, which was covered with two inches of water, with no way to go around, and I thought, this is just like grief. You can't go over, you can't go under, you can't go around. You just have to march through and feel its crushing pain. But every night, I knew I would get a hot shower and sleep in a warm, dry bed. I met amazing people and saw beautiful scenery. I have always connected with nature growing up in a camping family in Minnesota. I worked in camps for seven summers, the last three as a canoe guide in the Boundary Waters canoe area. After Andrew died, I walked outside every single day for at least a year. The scenery of the Camino was gorgeous. Flowers were blooming. Bird song and the rustle of wind were my companions. Walking and listening gave me time to ponder and absorb God's presence. I mostly walked alone, which I preferred, because it gave me lots of time for reflection. I talked out loud to Andrew. I sang on occasion. 
and I complained to God. I read devotions from the Camino website as well as those photographed and sent to me from Danita. These encouraged me to rest in God's presence and to trust him. I deeply commit, connected with Psalm 42, which has been sung and read this morning. Verses 1 to 3 and 9 say, As a deer longs for streams of water, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? My tears have been my food day and night, while they say to me all day long, where is your God? I say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? Why must I walk about mourning? Three amazing experiences showed me that God and Andrew are with me and that I can trust God with my future. The first was on my birthday, which was the fourth day of my walk. I arrived at my albergue in Teneo in mid-afternoon and enjoyed chatting and meeting people out on the patio. This is when I met Mies from Holland, a 20-year-old traveling with his sister. He was wearing a Boy Scout vest, and I learned that he was a Boy Scout leader. And I shared that my son had been in scouting and that I had been a Girl Scout leader for 12 years. He thought that was the coolest thing. <laughs> that and plus my age, I think, impressed him. Anyway, while everyone was out having dinner, I decided to get a cake from the grocery store for my birthday because, of course, who knew there that it was my birthday? to share with anyone who wanted some. Back in the kitchen, I cut it in slices and shared it with whoever was there. Eventually, Mies came in and sat down with me to have some cake. We talked. He made me laugh. And later, when everyone had already gone to bed, we finally said goodnight. I stayed up alone to watch a beautiful sunset. It wasn't until the next day that I realized that I had been sent a gift for my birthday. You see, Andrew wasn't good about giving me things. That is a gift that my daughter, Ruth Ann, has. But he was willing to spend time with me for my birthday. And some of my best memories are of how he celebrated with me. One year, he came to an English country dance and danced with me and all of my older friends. <laughs> Another, he came and played silly games like gestures with me and my friends. He came to my 60th birthday bonfire. He went bike riding with me. And on my 67th birthday on the Camino de Santiago, he sent a young man who made me laugh. And he spent time with me as a gift for my birthday. The second experience was the night before Andrew's birthday, which happens to be six days after mine. At the albergue that night, I had been assigned a top bunk, which is hard to get down from and up to in the middle of the night. So I was kind of talking about this in the kitchen. <laughs> and Steve from Ireland, who had been assigned the bunk below me, offered to switch with me. And I said, OK. <laughs> I'm not that proud. Um, later, I returned to the kitchen to sit and write a bit and organize photos on my phone. Steve was there, and we started talking. Somehow, he mentioned that he had been in scouts in Ireland and that it had changed his life. We had a lovely chat. Later, I thought, that Steve's gifts to me were something that Andrew would have done. He was kind, and he would have happily exchanged bunks with an older person and enjoyed talking with them, especially about scouts. Again, I had been given a gift to help me through the next day of walking, which would have been Andrew's 30th birthday. I walked this day alone, thinking and praying. And as rain fell from the sky, tears fell from my eyes. 
The third experience was after I finished the Camino. I arrived alone into Santiago on the morning of the 17th day, completely soaked. I stayed in Santiago for two nights, intending to continue walking to the coast where there are two coastal ending villages. But on the morning that I was preparing to leave Santiago, I looked at the weather forecast. It was supposed to be gorgeous hot weather for the next seven days, and I knew it would be hotter weather than I liked for hiking with my backpack. And I felt the coast calling, and so I decided to get on a bus and go. <laughs> it was the best decision for me ever, because I could walk the trails and on the beaches and just talk to people and not carry my backpack for seven days. <laughs> So, um, on the morning that I was going to leave one town to go to the next, I went back to a beach that I had visited twice previously, thinking about whether it was the place that I should spread, at, spread Andrew's ashes that I had carried with me. One thing you should know before I tell the rest of this story is that Andrew had a dog named Attigan a small, white, fluffy Bichon. She had become my dog when Andrew left home. She was beloved by our whole family. She died in 2015. So back to the beach. There were a few people on the beach, including some locals. I headed off to the far end and about halfway there, a little, white, fluffy dog ran up to me wanting me to pet her. No other dog ever approached me in Spain. This little white fluffy dog gratefully accepted me petting her, jump, jumped up and down in front of me, just like Hattigan would do, and raced off. I had been given a third gift. I spread Andrew's ashes on that beach. Five days later, I flew home from Spain. Nothing changes overnight. My heart still aches missing Andrew. I still have questions of why did he die. But I feel more at peace. I believe that I can trust God with my future. Walking the Camino and the experiences I had gave me proof of that. Though the future will be different from what I had envisioned. Here we have an adaptation of Jeremiah 29 11, which says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. The two young men I met who gave me gifts of time didn't know that my son had died. Their what to them may have seemed like small acts of kindness, but they meant everything to me and they helped heal my heart. We don't know what other people are going through or what small things like offering to trade bunks or listening to a person can mean to them. But both of these kindnesses meant the world to me. Your kindnesses, support, and prayers have helped me heal too. Thank you for praying for me before and during the Camino. I was gone for one month. I never got sick. I never had an accident. I didn't suffer from blisters. My planes, trains, and buses were on time. I met wonderful people and received healing gifts. May we all choose to be kind and to help others when we can. May we continue to trust God and feel his peace, no matter our circumstances. May we show God's love through our words, prayers, and actions. And with the psalmist, hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Thank you to Pastor Erica for allowing me to speak. Thank you for your prayers and support in my continuing grief journey and my Camino pilgrimage. Thank you.
Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. I'll tell everybody about you wherever you go. You abandoned my life and my peace and our love, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. O oh, Jesus, I'll pray you as long as I journey. May all of my joy be a faithful reflection of you. May the earth and the sea As long as I live, Jesus, make me your servant. I'll carry your cross to the chair of your burdens and tears. For you save me by giving your body and blood was mine. I live, Jesus, make me your servant. I fear in the dark and the doubt of my journey, but courage will come with the sound of your steps by my side. Together, let us profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. Third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. Even the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With gratitude for all God has given us, let us return our offerings to God. You may be seated. Works up for me if they can hear me. Okay, let me just pull it further down a little further.
Lord God, let these offerings help us all along our paths and let them be useful in following our faith and helping our church. May our minds, souls, and bodies help to serve you. Let our gifts and kindness help not only you, but our friends, our community, and our world. Amen. All right, so for our um, prayers of joy and concern today, at Joys, we have that Paula Long is celebrating a birthday. We have um, also today marks literally five years since I was ordained a pastor. Um, so feels weird, but good. And thank you, Lauren, for, for singing that, that song that you wrote to commemorate ordination anniversaries. That was meaningful. Thank you. Um, that Bingle Camp had another good week. We, someone in our community had a good weekend with their grandkids. Joy for the firefighters, volunteers, and people who are assisting with fires. For Kathy and her sharing and her expressions of love. We have prayers of concern for everyone out in the smoke. For Frederick, Doreen, and everyone at General Assembly. For the Globe Creek camp on the Elliott, uh, fire is very close. For the homeless, for those in need. Um, and this is a, a blessing, um, a, thank, a thanking God that the smoke jumpers saved three cabins, including Becky's from burning down um, on the Elliott. And for all the trouble spots in the world, especially Sudan, Ukraine, Israel, Gaza, and Syria. Are there others to add today? Yeah, Susan. So, wow. So last night at the women's golf, Midnight Sun Golf, Midnight Sun golf um, tournament, they raised 5000 for breast cancer detection. That's awesome. Yeah. So we're praying for Dan and his parents. Dan has gone down to Arizona to help his dad who's struggling with Parkinson's. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Sarah. So Bert has come down with COVID, um, praying for him and for Lois as she cares for him. Um, All right, would you pray with me? Holy God, we give you thanks for all of the ways that you are present in our midst, for the ways that you shower us with gifts and remind us that you are with us. We give you thanks for the gift of new years of life, like for Paula today. We give you thanks for the ways that we are able to serve you um, and I especially give thanks for the ways that um, you have allowed me to serve you these past five years. We give you thanks, God, that Bingo Camp had another good week and that um, some of our members had really good time with their grandkids. We give you thanks, God, for the firefighters, volunteers, and people who are assisting with the fires. For Kathy and her sharing and all of the ways that she expresses her love. And for the, the 5000 that was raised by the Midnight Sun Golf Tournament that um, 
This can assist with breast cancer detection. We ask that this money can be life-giving and life-saving for so many. And God, we come to you in concern today with hearts heavy as we um, are worried about so many people and are holding them in our thoughts. For Bert, as he um, goes through having COVID, for everyone out in the smoke and those living along the Elliot, we give thanks that they um, have been able to keep three cabins from burning, including Becky's. But we ask that you continue to keep all safe who are in the path of danger. We ask that you be with Frederick, Doreen, and everyone who is at General Assembly, that their work and their discussions, their voting, their deliberating, their listening, their singing, their praying, that it all can be to the glory of you and that they can know and hear your will in this world and in this denomination. We pray for the homeless and those in need. God, you know their needs and their, their desires. And God, we ask that you would respond to them, sustain them, keep them safe, and nourish them. We pray for all the troubled spots in the world, especially Sudan and Ukraine, Israel and Gaza, Syria, and so many more places that are wrecked by violence and turmoil, hunger and despair. Bring peace to these troubled places. Help our leaders to know and be able to find compromises and solutions that could tend to all. And God, we ask that you be with Dan and his parents, especially his dad. As Dan is in Arizona caring for his father, we ask that you be with them in this time. Holy God, we lift these prayers up to you, these spoken aloud and those spoken in our hearts, knowing that you hear them and that you respond to them. And so we summarize all these prayers, trusting in your grace, using the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of commitment is As the Wind Song, number 292. Before we sing, I have a little announcement. So Lynn Slusher is here, and last week I went out when we were spreading ashes at um, Birch Lake, but I brought some back to spread in the garden. So if any of you afterwards, after kind of coffee hour, want to go out with us, we're going to spread some of Monty's ashes in the garden.
May God who gives you life, Christ who shares your life, and the Spirit who is your life be with you today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. Feel this relief that the Savior makes you well. So go in peace. Be whole. We will. Thanks be to God.